to God be the glory. This is Yusuf Yaqub Fisa coming to you again this week with the moment of truth. We appreciate the Lord for all that he's done for us in the past months and all the messages that he's been passing through this platform. The Lord bless you mightily. Father, we ask you to come and take total control of this week's message as we speak your word, as we remind ourselves of the transient journey we're all involved in. You've taught us to count our days, our blessings, name them one by one, and value our days. Marvelous Jehovah, please, we ask for this week, bless us with understanding of where we're going to and the end of this journey. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, fellow uh, viewers, listeners, and followers. The Lord mightily bless you in your endeavors in the mighty name of Jesus. This is a new week. Uh, we're coming to you with another message that will strengthen us and give us hope as to the end of this journey that we're embarking on. Last week, for those who were opportune to be with us, we talked about uh, Jesus Christ simplified. We're talking about the phenomenon of, uh, of Jesus Christ. Jesus has a phenomenon that we need to understand this phenomenon very well. But the inability of understanding Jesus as a phenomenon or wrongly understanding him has made a lot of people to lose their faith. And in the moments of, of, of tragedies, sorrows, people begin to uh, lose their focus. We concluded that one, the Jesus phenomenon is an open door call invitation to every one of us. Wherever you are, whatsoever your background, your sex, it does not matter. Jesus is for all of us. And then we concluded that if you make the right decision or you make a wrong one, you still meet Jesus Christ as the judge of all judges. That was what we said. Now, understanding that Jesus is the judge of all judges, we now want to talk about the need for us to understand the steps towards approaching his throne of judgment. It is appointed unto man once to die and after that judgment. Now, there is something very phenomenal about the journey of man on earth here. And that is that bus stop, the grave, as a bus stop. A lot do not care to do some findings about the grave as a bus stop. And today we want to be able to educate us on the nature of the grave. And so our topic for this week is understanding the grave. The grave is a place, it's a hotel room, it is a lodge, it's a bus stop that every one of us, before we approach the throne of judgment, where Jesus will serve and sit as the judge of all judges, we must pass through this bus stop. And when you're passing through a position in life, you need to understand that circumstance, that situation very well. Because you do not know how long you're going to be in that hotel room. You do not know what actually is in that hotel room. Each time you're going to five-star hotels, you have an idea that you're going to get value for your money. There will be air condition there, there will be uh, refrigeration in the room there, there's going to be beautiful cozy beds, well arranged, well packaged, you know, uh, with spices around the place, beautiful soaps and the rest. That's your understanding of a five-star hotel. And that the workers are going to be very courteous, they will treat you with respect and everything. But then what about the grave where all of us are going to spend a lot of time before the trumpet will sound, before the dead will be raised. Do you take time to just pause and say, look, what is the nature of the grave? How will the pillows there be? What about the bed sheet, the duvets? 
Now, today we want to open our eyes to the nature of the grave. Whether you want to listen to this message or not, you're still going to pass through it, I'm still going to pass through it, except the Master comes before time. So please come along with us today and let's enjoy ourselves. It's not uh, a frightening thing. You need to know where you're going to. You need to know where you're going to pass through. And so, uh, why do we need to talk about the grave? We need to because we're told that our passage through this earth is, it, it, it's like the smoke. It comes, it disappears, like the flowers. By morning time, the flower blossoms, but by evening time, it is no more. We spend so much time in building our homes, in buying Porsche cars, beautiful things. We spend so much time taking care of our bodies here, but we need to also know that this body is going to lie somewhere else, and until the right time to redeem it comes, it will be there. It's necessary that we look at this destination where we're going to all pass through. And so, I want to draw your attention to Proverbs chapter 30 verse 16, which says there are four things that are never, never satisfied in life. It says, a burning worm, fire, the grave, and the dry land that needs water. It keeps taking, it keeps taking. The more you give it, the more it wants to take. All over the world, we hear of wars here and there. People are on and on and on going through to the graves. Not so we need to understand this. And so I want to use Proverbs chapter 30 verse 16 today to discuss with us the nature of the grave. There are four things, five things I want to share with us today concerning the nature of the grave. One is that the grave has more appetite than any other creation of mankind. More appetite, always testing, always looking for more to take in. And that's why Proverbs chapter 30, 16 says, mentions one of the four things that are never, never satisfied, that never say enough is the grave. So whether you like it or not, the grave will keep swallowing everybody, except it is the time of rapture. Number two thing that we need to understand about the grave is that it is a pit with a bar, with a bar that is lockable, tightly lockable. In Job chapter 17, verse 16, Job asks his friends, he said, where is my hope now? Who can see my hope? He said, my hope is gone down the pit with a bar. That pit is the grave. It has a bar. It's locked out completely. There comes a time when one, no matter how great you are, no matter how beautiful you are, no matter how much you have accumulated, that grave will lock out that person, myself, and every other one listening to me now. And so if we have this understanding, we need to know how to conduct ourselves in our relationship with other people, in our relationship with wives, spouses, and children. But we end up seeing that many are ignorant of this and pretend not to know that this is going to be a bus stop that they must pass through, conduct themselves such that other human beings are reduced to nothing. We must have the fear of God. No one has the power to open up that place. Relations, wives, husbands would not be able to go back to open up that grave to see the condition of that person there. This is one funny thing about the grave. A pit with a bar. This is the understanding that the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the high priest had before they said Jesus be buried, be killed and be buried. They taught the same nature of grave will operate. 
And so they position soldiers there. They know fully well and hardly understand it that once something is put into the grave, it cannot come out again. So even when Jesus said on the third day he will resurrect, they didn't believe it. But that has to do with Jesus Christ, not with other mortals. Every mortal will be locked out there until the day of redemption. Number three thing that you need to know about the grave is that it takes in only it does not give back except at the sound of the trumpet as mentioned in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 he said and there shall be a great voice it is only when that great voice of God is heard and the trumpet is sounded that the grave is permitted to give up otherwise ordinarily the grave takes in it does not release wow it does not release my brother my sister you just have to understand that no matter how strong you are well protected well guided you are now in this world without receiving our lord jesus christ who alone has the power according to isaiah 49 verse 24 to 25 god said who can deliver the captive or the prey of the mighty captor who can deliver god says i the lord I'm able to do that. Only God is able to do that. And so if you don't have him, who will release you from the grips? From the fierce grips of the grave? No one. So we must understand this. Number four thing that you need to understand about the grave is that it does not preserve. When you put things inside the refrigerator, it preserves it till you come back. You can embalm a thing and do anything, keep it outside, yes. But as long as it is submitted to the grave, the grave corrupts. It destroys whatsoever is sent into it. Come back later and check the body of relations you put there. There's nothing you can ever find there. But there's a good news. And that good news is that for those who have submitted their lives to our Lord Jesus Christ, they are preserved on heart till the day of redemption. Their corrupt bodies will receive the incorruptible body. But what about you? If you don't have him, everything is going to be corrupted there. Number five, which is the last thing I want to share with us today concerning the nature of the grave, is that there are no activities, no single activity in the grave. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 says what? He said there there's no work, there's no wisdom, no understanding, no knowledge there. No matter how creative you are, today you might be a philosopher, you might be a professor of one field, an atheist or anything. Remember, this knowledge will end up here, will expire here. Over there, there's no craft, there's no trick. You know, you can be very smart on earth here, but over there, there's no smartness. There's no smartness. Does that really worry you? Does that not make us to think twice about the way we conduct ourselves concerning our faith and our trust in God? Proverbs chapter 3 says, What lean not on your understanding, but that in everything acknowledge Him, acknowledge God. So what we are out to say this way is that there is a destination, there is a bus stop, there is a hotel room that people will be prepared and will be lodged in there for a given time. But what happens there? There's no work, no wisdom, no beauty, no finesse, no professorial tact. Everyone there is equal. No matter how much you pay for the tomb, for the grave, and for the caskets, the grave will corrupt everything there. Wow. This is to tell us that we must have the fear of God in everything that we do. The Lord bless us. What is the consolation? The consolation is that those who believe in the Lord, those who believe in Him, they have hope. There is hope. For the scriptures proved it to us in Matthew chapter 27 verse 52. It says that when Jesus was on the cross, there was an earthquake. And because of the power the approval of the identity of the Son of God. There was an earthquake that confirmed everything. The veil was torn from top to bottom, allowing everybody to come in freely. Something significant happened that day. 
in verse 52 of Matthew 27, the grave opened up, the bodies of the saints were seen up, alive again, walking through the holy city of Jerusalem. What does that tell you? What it tells us is that on the day of redemption, the saints who have accepted our Lord Jesus Christ will arise again. They will walk, take a new body, and will be up with our Lord Jesus Christ. I wish you all the best. That this understanding for this will help you to prepare for this trip ahead of us. To prepare for this hotel room, to prepare for this lodge. You don't need to pay for it. Your relatives may pay for it. But I want to tell you that it's all for everybody. No one will be left on top here. But there is hope. And I've said it. The hope is that we will rise again. For as many as have accepted and will accept our Lord Jesus Christ, that there is hope for us. On that day, Lord Jesus Christ, seal everyone who has accepted with the mark of the Holy Ghost. Pray that you seal every one of us with that mark unto the day of redemption, that when the trumpet will sound, everyone that has had this message and is ready to believe in you will rise again and will sit with you and rejoice with you. God bless you for sparing time to listen to this message this week. God bless you as you make effort to share this message with your relatives and with your friends and even with enemies. The Lord bless us. Till we come your way again next week on this same platform of Moment of Truth. It's Yusuf Yaakov Fisa wishing you the best of all times in this new week. God bless you again.